So if you're using Next.js to build your application or website and you're struggling to get it like score well and score good, like have the 100 score in Lighthouse, well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your score and make it score 100 on Lighthouse using Next.js with the best practice actually you can apply from like optimizing images to funds optimization to SEO and so much more. And a matter of fact, I use those same exact techniques to optimize my own portfolio website, islamabud.com into making it score 100 in Lighthouse. So I have in here my own personal brand kind of forward slash portfolio website and it's completely built using Next.js and it uses Next.js and it has been just deployed like I have deployed it like a couple of weeks ago. I'm gonna use it as an example on how I was able to actually take it from, you know, a very bad score in here, especially in SEO and accessibility on like performance because the performance actually depends on a lot of factors, but I'm gonna show you how I can actually was able to take it from that step into a higher step and actually score hundred and make it so good. And of course I was able to do all of those and actually following the best practices from the next year's website or like the core vitals or core web vitals. So they have actually a lot of advices in here and instructions on how you can do that from like, oh, how you can test using Lighthouse, how you can use next image to optimize images, dynamically import libraries, uh, pre-connect like third party libraries, funds optimization, loading third party scripts, and so much more. And I actually used this and added a lot of more stuff to actually improve it to its best. So before we get started, we have a really, really awesome announcement about our new brand new personal website, which called islamabud.com and as well as like a newsletter release and a discord server. And the website is simply like a full slash portfolio or personal brand for Islamabud for me and the code one YouTube channel. So we can have a lot of stuff in here, like who I am and stuff like that. And also what we're also going to have in here is a really awesome newsletter that's going to have a lot of developers and you can actually join us where we have like a B weekly newsletter specifically made for developers for like finding out new jobs, uh, maybe like knowing about new courses we're going to be releasing really, really soon. Uh, you can learn more, more like blogs and so many stuff in tech in here, how to learn the jobs in a perfect way. So you can make sure to go ahead and join the newsletter on islamabud.com forward slash join newsletter in here, put your name, your email, and stay tuned for a bi-weekly newsletter. As well as if you ever wanna join in our like, Discord and share thoughts, need help, or you, or you wanna basically collaborate with other people, I have a lot of resources over there. You can just go down in here and actually find the Discord here or just click on join community. It's gonna take you right in Discord server in here. You can continue and you can actually just join us to have a bigger and a better community. Also, before we get started in here, actually the way to run a production build of Next.js on your local host and without actually deploying it. So you can always test on Lighthouse on a production build. It's actually by doing yarn build. So make sure yarn build is gonna run and actually build for you a production ready kind of build. And after that one is done, you can basically run yarn starter here, which is gonna start the server, like a, a production ready server using the build that you just run, and it's gonna put it by default on port 3000. So this way you can run Lighthouse, which you always should run your Lighthouse on a production build. You never wanna actually run it on a development build because it's gonna give you a very horrible kind of scores. Also one other thing in here, before running Lighthouse, what you wanna actually make sure you do in your browser, for example, using Chrome in here. So you always wanna make sure you run it on incognito and you wanna run it without no extensions because running like Lighthouse with extensions sometimes it bugs, sometimes extensions actually have a very huge bad impact on the score itself because they load some third party stuff and whatever. So you always, 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 always wanna make sure you're running on incognito mode in here and you have all the extensions basically disabled. All right. So the first step we want to actually optimize and what we're going to do is actually optimize images. And yes, images it plays a major, major role of any website because nowadays like websites can't, you know, you can't have a website without having a decent set of images and they're all with like high resolution. They're very large in size. They have a lot of constraints and responsiveness and stuff like that. So you have to basically optimize them to its best. So for example, in here, I've got like a couple of images. Um, I have like maybe this one in here. This one is a placeholder. I replaced it in upcoming ones, but maybe like this, this one is an SVG. But let's say I wanna optimize this image, my portfolio kind of image in here. So if I look into the lighthouse in here, they did run. And remember, this is actually the bad one. So this, we are in like kind of like the non-optimized version of the website. 
So in Lighthouse in here, if you look into it and you just scroll down a little bit in here, I've got in here like image element do not have an explicit width and height. So it immediately just kind of complains between explicit width and height because setting those explicitly kind of kind of like helps you kind of avoid uh, UI shifts or just shifting the UI in the CSS when the website is being loaded. So what Lighthouse in here actually recommends, we go ahead and use the next image. And yes, this is actually correct. So you basically want to use always if you're using Next.js, you want to utilize is this really, really awesome component which is called the next image, which has been released since like the version 13, I guess something. And this will just basically give you a lot of stuff. So inside of the code I have in here is for example, this picture in here is our picture. So if I try to go ahead and see the definition, I'm using style components in here. And for the picture, I'm using motion image, which is just basically using frame or motion for animation. And this is just simply the HTML image. So technically, I'm not actually utilizing or not using the next image custom component. So what you can do in here is go ahead and use the image component. So you can just make sure you select that and actually import this from next image screen on the top in here. So you can click on it, it's going to automatically be imported for us using VS Code. But if you don't know that that's actually basically being imported from where and this will just technically will allow us to basically work with images better. So now we can actually use the sizes property, which is a very, very important one when it comes to the next GS image components and kind of like helps a lot optimizing your website and helping it like load faster depending on the screen size. So the sizes in here, basically what it tells it, you can actually load responsive images. So you say, oh, if the maximum width is 768, which is more of like a mobile kind of tablet view. So I want to load like the whole image by its Itself. So like the whole size of the image, 100 viewport or view width in here, sorry, and maximum width in here, for example, for like laptops, I want to just only hold like, a, like a portion like a 50% of it. So you can imagine if it like a 50%, which gonna decrease the size of the image. And behind the scenes, everything magically happens and being generated for you. So technically an XGS behind the scenes is going to take those stuff in here that you put in here and the different sizes you put in here, it's going to generate for you different images depending on the sizes you put. And this will help your website load a lot, lot faster because it depends on the images. And as soon as the images are becoming visible, it's just going to be a lot better and it's going to score better in Lighthouse. And of course, here for loading, you always, always want to set this to eager. You would never want to do it for laziness unless you have a really good reason to. But most of the times you don't want to actually do that. Eager loading is the best for images because it's going to just like load it as soon as the website or the web page is being loaded. It's going to make it a lot faster and it's going to like increase the score in your lighthouse. The other important part for images is actually compressing images. So for example, in here, for instance, if I go inside of my like assets folder, I have a bunch of images like pictures of me, uh, maybe, you know, going to a conference, stuff like that. So for example, in here, I got this picture, where it's like actually like a cover picture. So I have two sizes of it. So cover picture two, which is a very large one is actually the first one before I did resize and compress that one. So it was like 990 pixels. And it was almost like a at one megabyte, that was ridiculous size for an image. So what I had to go through is actually compress the image and resize it because I don't need that huge size. I don't need this 990 pixels in here. So simply all I need is more of like just 600 pixels and it just can fit that perfectly. And it did resize it from like one megabyte to 334 kilobyte. The second thing you want to actually make sure you do is removing unnecessary or unused dependencies. Because as as developers, we tend to install our dependencies, and we just like completely forget about them over time. And those dependencies actually gets somehow into the latest bundle, which is going to make it a lot bigger. And it doesn't actually need to be because you don't need those dependencies in the first place. So simply make sure you just go through all your package.json dependencies in here and try to inspect what you are actually using and what you're not using inside of your code. Or maybe sometimes you're using a very large one, for example, in here, I've got like this example for like Lodash, and we all know that the Lodash library has a lot of utility functions. And of course, installing Lodash and actually loading all the utility functions, and sometimes you're only using one or two of them, it's just insane. It's going to make your bundle size explode, even though tree shaking and some of you guys say, oh, tree shaking in Next.js actually works. Yes, but not always perfectly. So what I tend to do in here, for example, I only needed the debounce function from Lodash. So I went through and actually installed only the Lodash.debounce, which is just going to install me a one single function. And that is it. 
So always, always make sure to double check and see what dependencies you have and what dependencies you need to remove because they already did like prune and remove some of the unused dependencies in here. The third step is actually fund optimization. Yes, you're hearing it right, actually loading funds. And if you're basically loading more than one fund to start your website, and if you're, for example, loading them from Google, you're doing a huge mistake. Because in Next.js, it has a really, really awesome built-in package called Next for slash funds that actually allows you to automatically kind of like do everything for you. It's just super magical. So for example in here, what it actually allows you to do, actually download the CSS and fun files are gonna be downloaded at build time and self-hosted with the rest of your static assets by Next.js. So all you gotta do is just tell it which funds you want to have. For example, you wanna like use enter and other kind of funds from like Google funds, and it's gonna do the rest for you. And yes, it supports Google funds in here. You can use Google funds however you want. So for example, what I did in here, go through like utils folder in here, I created a funds.typescript file, which I actually export all the funds and actually set up all the funds inside of here. And I'm using all of those from the next fund package. So I access like the Google package in here. So I load these two Google funds and actually tell it like, what is the variables and stuff like that? For example, the subsets in here, oh, if you wanna use Latin and stuff like that. And same thing in here, for example, oh, you wanna only load a single weight or you wanna load all the weights in here. So you can do a lot of customization and tell it which funds should be downloaded and cached for future use. And you can easily use them later on by just doing enter font in here, for example, importing the font that you already created from, you know, next font in here. For example, you just set, oh, you go inside of the HTML, you set the font family into the font in here and just the font family and everything is gonna be generated for you. The fourth one is you wanna actually go through and actually disable animations, particularly only on mobile. Of course, this is just like an edge case, but like 90% of the time is disabling animation on mobile is gonna improve the overall user experience and the load time of your website. Because as we all know, mobile devices are like a user accessing like your website through their mobile, through like 3G or very bad networks most of the times. They're not gonna have the ability to load all this animation, actually wait for them, and sometimes it's super laggy as they have the experience on my website in here. The animations on mobile were super, super laggy using frame remotion. So what I had to go through and do is actually frame remotion in here, only disable it on, on mobile. So disable completely the animation on mobile. So check if it's mobile, disable the animation. Otherwise, just let it work as it should be. So of course, it's actually gonna depend on the library or the animation library you're using, but if you're using frame remotion, most of the libraries are gonna have the same API. So that's what's what basically what I did. So simply in here, I created another component just to wrap things up. So this is called disable animation on mobile, and I'm using some breakpoints in here. So if I check if the breakpoint is less than like medium, which is like 767 in width in pixels. So that means we are in mobile. And if we are in mobile in here, I just simply go ahead, like return this. So if you're not in mobile, just do nothing. But if you're in mobile, just go ahead and clone the children here and modify the props, which is, you know, the, the frame of motion props in here to disable animation and make them like a default props in here to completely disable everything and just clone the elements of return it. And of course, later on, for example, inside of my blog here, the blog in here usually has this really awesome appear animation in here on the top. But simply in here, I completely disable that using this on mobile. So this is actually, if it's desktop or if it's higher than MD in width, it's just gonna work perfectly. But if it's actually less than MD or equals to MD, that means it's actually in mobile. And that's completely gonna overwrite, you know, all the props is gonna be returned by this function and it's gonna completely disable animations. So for example, if we try to look into the website in here, we are in desktop in here, if I click on it, as you see, the animation works perfectly on, on basically desktop. But if we try that on mobile in here, I'm just using responsive mobile in here and try to refresh the page on the blog, Scarcity appears immediately without any intermediate animation, which is gonna make it feel faster for you know slow networks and mobile users. The fifth step that you can actually do in here, if you're using frame motion, I'm not sure about other animation libraries, but for frame motion, you can actually reduce the bundle size by quite a lot by just using this lazy motion component. So lazy motion in here is gonna tell basically frame of motion in here that you don't want the full animation capabilities from the library. You don't wanna import everything at once, but instead you wanna lazy import them or you can only just provide exactly what you want. For example, in here, you only wanna just do DOM animations and not all the type of animations in here like gestures and stuff like that. And that's gonna cut the kind of like, you know, bundle size by quite a lot. 
And of course, you can replace the motion library in here, which or basically the motion import that you import from frame of motion through with this like M kind of like import in here, which is like a lot smaller, a lot lightweight, and it only uses the you know lazy motion kind of loaded stuff in here. So for example, in here for the library and what I'm using it, I go to inside of the app.tsx in here where everything starts rendering, so the roots, and I put this lazy motion kind of component. And of course, it did tell it which features I want. And for now, I only want DOM animations because all I'm doing just some opacity, color changes, and some transitions. I'm not doing any complicated gestures or drag and drop or any of this very complicated stuff. So why import them? So it's better just to only import what you were basically using. And that's basically what I'm using. I'm using only DOM animation and just swap or basically just wrap my component in here. And for example, inside of the components later on, when we try to do the actual animation, for example, if you go inside of the blog, so I go inside of the blog in here, for example, the title. So I try to look in the title. So the title in here actually uses the M instead of like the full motion one. We don't want to use that. So I want to only use the M in here to use the lazy loaded ones and only use those provided DOM animations. And yes, this will actually will help you cut the bundle size and quite a lot. And of course, the M in here is basically the same as the motion. It's only like what you do in here, just basically you tell it which features are provided and which features are not. All right, so now for the sixth step that you must do for any website in here, and of course, besides that actually need SEO optimization, which most websites actually does, you want to use a really awesome package called the Next SEO. So Next SEO in here is really awesome library in here that works both for pages, so which means the old kind of like just like uh, pages directory and routing system and the new app directory. For my current website right now, I'm using the pages and having fully migrated into the app just yet, but it works perfectly for both. So basically this library allows you to basically add kind of like SEO for everything from open graph to uh, different stuff like changing the title per page basis, uh, Twitter, Facebook, or canonical like URLs in here, or maybe use JSON LD in here to help optimize search optimization, for example, for Google Search Console, and using like JSON LD in here for different stuff, maybe you're using a blog or something. There are so many capabilities you can do using this really awesome library in a very, very simple way. So here I'm gonna just gonna show you what I actually needed for my projects, but of course it depends on the type of project you have. If you have a blog, you can do it this way. If you have uh, articles or recipes, kind of like website or any kind of website that needs SEO, it actually has a need for a specific uh, kind of configuration. So that are going to be varying uh, quite a lot. So what I'm going to show you is actually the skeleton and what I did and what actually works for me and what made it super easy for me in terms of like developer experience. So first I installed the next SEO as I said before, the really awesome package. Then I created this next-seo.config.typescript. So this will tell Next.js SEO that this is actually the default SEO configuration. So for like, for example, if the web page doesn't have explicit or particular configuration for SEO, Next SEO can fall back into this default one and can use it. So to start off in here is very simple. So I'm, all I'm providing here, for example, description is going to provide like the meta tag description, uh, default title in here is going to be applied by default. If there's no title or no other pages, uh, like, you know, the, the URL of the website in here, additional link tags in here, I'm using favicon in here. So it's actually, this is how you set the favicon. And when it comes to open graphs, so open graphs basically used by social media like LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter to basically when people share your website or contents, you tell exactly what you want to do. For example, what image you want to display on the preview, what is the description going to put, what is the site name, title and stuff like that. So we want to make sure you put those correctly. And as well as the Twitter in here, which is like when people share your stuff, you want to link them to an author and stuff like that. So you can tell, oh, this is the handle of the author. For example, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, this is the site of the author, maybe the card type in here, like how you want to show it when somebody tries to share it on Twitter or tweet about it. So there's actually a bunch of bunch of possibilities and using this really awesome like default SEO prompts in here, it's actually I'm using from the next SEO in here just makes it a lot easier. So instead of going through and actually putting the link meta inside of the head every single time, using it this way, quite simple. Now, the next thing I do in here is actually go into every single page that needs some custom stuff or like custom SEO configuration in here and actually override that. So what I do, I go to SEO in here and create like a component on every single page in here, for example, the index or the landing page in here, I use the next SEO component and try to put all those as props. So I put the description, for example, oh, it's like my board in here portfolio. And just a quick notice in here. So whatever like you kind of like ignore from this next SEO is going to like bring it from the default configuration. So if you have like a default one and you only want to override a couple of like parameters or 
options, you can only just overwrite those in here. It's going to fall back to the default for the missing ones. So for example, in here, I'm only changing the description. I'm not changing the title and I'm changing the open graph images. I'm so I'm setting specific different image in here with like specific uh, width and height. And you also want to set the alt to type. So it's, it's a huge thing in here. Also, what works for me really, really well is actually is the JSON LD because JSON LD in here is like a specific format made by Google to help their, you know, Google search kind of like engine or, or robots to basically scroll your website quite easier and actually have a better kind of preview on the on the Google search results. So this one actually works as well. So I'm using here, for example, the social profile JSON, which is to tell it how you want to like, what is a profile? What is my profile? So if somebody actually shares that and tries to do some quick search on Google, it's going to display potentially my profile from one of these kind of like related, um, you know, social platforms. And it actually keeps going. So if you go inside of the blog in here, you have and actually it keeps going. So for example, if you go inside of the blog in here, you have different configuration for that. If you go to, I don't know, about there, you have different configuration and it keeps going and it keeps going. So there are so many things in here. So this actually I'm doing it on every single page in here. I'm actually overriding the next SEO with different configurations and stuff. And I'm having a default one in here. So for fullback for pages that, you know, doesn't have that or something, I'm just using this as a default. I think the best way to approach SEO in here because it has so many things in here, you can't cover it in one single video. So going through like next SEO in here, so try to access this readme page of this library in here in GitHub and try to read through the readme in here, the table of contents and actually go through every single one of these you will better understand exactly what they do and if you ever need them for your website or not. And if you try to quickly test the Lighthouse or run the Lighthouse score again, you're going to find a lot of differences in performance, accessibility, maybe also best practices in here, and particularly SEO is like 100%. So if you make sure that you apply all the SEO best practices and use next year's SEO properly and have all the parameters covered up, you will get 100 score on SEO. And when I talk about SEO, there's actually some stuff that are also related to accessibility. So fixing SEO will fix a lot of accessibility issues as well. Now for accessibility, particularly, you can actually improve that as well. So there's actually some stuff and teeny tiny stuff that actually can improve the accessibility in here and improve your score overall. So for example, in here, when it comes to that, for example, for pictures, what you want to make sure you do always is actually provide an alt in here. So alt R2 view is going to give a lot of like a lot of a uh, advantage in the accessibility score in here because it's going to provide, you know, to search engines and, you know, to accessibility settings in general, like what the image is for people who like, you know, can't see the image for some reason, you know what I mean? So this actually can work quite a lot as well as when it comes to links, for example, here you've got this social icon, which is on itself an anchor link. So an anchor link here, which is basically just like an H or a link in here, just that's what it is. So for social icon in here, have those social icons where there's no text inside of it, it just basically have the parents and the child in here is just simply an SVG icon. So this will actually break your accessibility. So to basically fix it, because accessibility needs to always make sure you have some text in here to display for people that actually can't see those particularly. So what you can basically do is actually replace it with this area label kind of attribute and area label in here is going to act as a, you know, like a replacement text for people that basically can't see that kind of image in here is going to like see this, this area label kind of thing, which kind of represents exactly what this social icon is about. So for example, in here, like code one YouTube channel, or maybe some would get a profile. So basically just a quick description of what this one is. And there you go. And this should actually give you a really good score when it comes to, you know, lighthouse score in here. And for example, if you want to test this with a deployed one, so like you set up with .com in here, where you have, you know, everything deployed and everything working in here, maybe you can just run this quickly. And of course, this is actually running the production build and it's running and deployed on Versal. And there you go. So it's actually what we're going to get, going to get a really nice one when it comes to performance, best practices and SEO, and particularly, particularly in here for performance. Of course, performance is kind of like not always going to get 100, maybe 100, 98, 99. It's not always 100 because it depends a lot on the network network bandwidth you have and uh, you know, the quality of the network and the servers and the uh, quite a lot of factors coming into that one. But for SEO in here, best practice and accessibility, you're always going to get it right because it's related to the actual website content.